How many bottles are filled every day? Hundred thousand. Hundred thousand. Oh my God, guys. This is one of UAE's biggest perfume factory which is spread across 1,50,000 square feet and here 100,000 bottles are filled every single day making it the biggest production unit in the Middle East. This is Ajman's perfume factory in Dubai. Started in the owner's backyard is today Middle East's leading perfume brand. Ajmal Perfumes is exporting their products to more than 50 countries and they have more than 300 stores. We've been given special access to their manufacturing unit to see how the magic of fragrance is created. Let's go. Well, this manufacturing unit is huge and they have too many divisions and I can see the CEO of Ajmal Perfumes right here. Let me go meet him and ask him what goes behind making a perfume. Hello, Abdullah. Hey, how are you? Good, how are you? Good to see you here. Thank you so much for giving us access to this manufacturing unit. Not at all, <laughs> it's, it's my pleasure. But it's huge and Thank a bit you. difficult to comprehend. Okay. So what's happening here? What goes behind making a perfume? So it's not actually that complicated. I know the machines make it a little daunting. Basically, we take all the raw materials in their oil form and we put them into this, what we call maturation. Basically, they're being stirred right. so that they mix completely. So the chemical composition blends. After this, we take it to the other room where we will go and I'll show you what happens next. Wow, so how many rooms are there and how is the division really happening here? In terms of actual manufacturing, this is where you manufacture the oil. Then the other one is where you put the alcohol and water to make it the EDP, EDT. And then there is another room where the filling and we're going to go there and see it. Wow, okay, then let's go. This is not strong. So oh, what is it that I can smell? What this is, it? is a, a product called Cipriol. Uh, okay. So the it's a wood okay. and the extract of the wood. You can smell the woodiness. Here is the oud resin that we extract. Abdullah, now I'm very intrigued to know how a perfume is actually made. So let's begin by talking about the raw materials. Where do you or where does Ajmal source its raw materials from? As we uh, get some of the best raw materials from around the world, yes. it's not just one area. Mm -hmm. It is places like Europe, uh, Southeast Asia, India, obviously. This is where our absolute, absolute differentiation is mm -hmm. that we are absolutely vertically integrated. What that means is that we also grow our own raw materials. In my knowledge, there is no other company in the world yeah. that does this. People have factories, they have shops, they have distribution, but we go one step behind that as well. The raw materials come from all over the world, but they're sourced at the best possible places. So when you say you grow your own raw materials, tell me where do you source these fragrances from? Is it usually the wood? It can be petals, such okay. as roses and jasmine. It can be woods, mm -hmm. okay? It can be roots, it can be leaves, it depends on the on the plant or the source where the oil will come from and we all know essential oils right yes any oil that comes from any of these is an essential oil mm -hmm. okay and right. when these essential oils are put in a mixture yeah. a concoction that's the one that we saw earlier that is the the actual perfume the origin the the oil itself and then we will be going into the room where the oil is then converted into what we know as perfume or EDP, EDT, right. where basically the oil is mixed with alcohol and yeah. water. Okay. So let's, let's have a look. So this is the nerve center of what we call maceration. Right. 
What is maceration? Maceration is basically ensuring because everything, even if you use all natural material, uh, it is a chemical process, right? So in here, yeah. no manual intervention happens. Alcohol and water at the right, uh, obviously, proportion is put in here and right. there is stirring going on inside, okay? In these metal vats, there is stirring happening yeah. and this will go on for anything between 25 to 45 days, depending on the raw materials. Certain raw materials need more time, others they can be managed less time. What the chemists do is they keep taking out samples from here okay. and checking olfactively as well as they go send it to the lab to check is there adulteration, is there a problem. Right. So at every step, we ensure that the, the quality is being measured and there is a team with quality control who is looking at the assurance that happens. We chill the perfume. So we take it through this chiller, right. okay, and at about four degrees, any kind of sedimentation or any other further process of chemical mixture will stop. So that gets cleaned out and the final, final, we call it a juice, the right. perfume is then stored in the vats okay. to be filled in the filling section where we are going to go next. see a lot of men and machines here so what's happening here <laughs> so this is the filling plant and let me okay. just quickly take you through right. how it works right this is where the bottle is placed inside the puck okay. to hold it in place because as we move through the filling machine you'll see the different processes that happen the first thing that happens is the cleaning if you can see the bottle is turned upside down yeah uh, a, gush of water is sprayed on the top so that it cleans it from inside oh. and then another area we put pump in air so okay. that the water residue comes right. out and it dries and there is nothing else left in there right. because you don't want dust to yeah. be settled in there now we continue this way the bottle is cleaned it is dried it now goes on to the filling area now in the filling area it is all pre set if it's a 50 ml, is it a 70 ml, is it 100 ml? As you can see, this is where the perfume is actually being filled in the bottle. These are wick pumps, as you would know, we call them actuators. And they would individually, manually put the actuator on the bottle. It moves forward and the actuator is then pushed into place over here. Right. Now, many other bottles, they also have a collar. Yeah. This one doesn't. So there is no need for it. We move forward and they put the cap and the collar together. And there are different designs. So with every design, the process will slightly change here and there. And that gets stamped in place. Now from here you can see it is being pumped in place. Right. Wow, this is so fascinating. It's a great industry, I have to tell you. And, and the different thing about our uh, factory is that most of these procedures can actually be automated. Right. But we don't because we believe in having uh, employees so that there is more household that can get income yeah. as well. I want to know how was it back in the day when your grandfather started this? These machines <laughs> didn't exist, no, uh, but the business has expanded so much over the years. How did the invention of this happen and how was perfume packing back in the day and also making? This kind of happened a, more about 25 odd years ago. Okay, we had a small plant, we were doing the same thing, but in a very, very small scale. In my grandfather's time, there was no alcoholic perfumes. So there were concentrates like what people call attar. Right. People have this thing, Are ye to attar hai. Every perfume starts off as an attar. Hmm. Only when it's mixed with alcohol and water, it becomes an EDT, EDP, what have you. So in his days, there was no sprays. There was only, you know, from the bottle, you would pour it into these small bottles or big decanters what have you. That's how it was. Then came the time for my father and uncles where they then invested in small machinery because there was some demand for these sprays. Yeah. But there were not that many. Yeah. That then further changed uh, after I came. In fact, the, we have another, another factory. Yeah. But this one was uh, made and inaugurated in 2004. 
Okay. So since then also a lot more has been evolved. Right now we can do about 50,000 units a day. We are going to put more lines. Something that has caught my attention is the vision, mission and values board out there. So what is it all about and uh, is it to align everybody who is working at Ajmal Perfumes with your goals? Well, uh, frankly speaking, this has happened way before I became CEO. Okay. So we had already put our vision and mission and values over there so that employees know, you know, what is the vision of the organization. They understand the mission, the values. Will any organization in the world say they actually, uh, what do you call it, execute everything? No, it doesn't work that way. But at least we are reminded all the time that look, all of us should be in the same direction. And one of the main reasons why we did it is so that everybody, from a laborer to a manager to an executive, anybody and everybody should know why does the organization, they call it reason to exist, yeah. the purpose. Yeah. And this is our purpose. Right. And what is the goal? I want to be a globally recognized brand. So as I mentioned, 60 now, in let's say five years max, I want to reach 120 countries at least. This has yeah. been very insightful, Abdullah. I've thank learned you. a lot about perfumes. So thank you very much for showing us around, decoding it for us as to what goes behind making a perfume. Thank you so My much. My pleasure. Thank you so much.